Well, good morning. It's January the 3rd and Happy New Year. I imagine you, probably like me, like uh, more than happy to see the back of 2020. Um, 2020 was a crazy year for so many reasons, but one of the reasons it was so crazy and so difficult for us all was to know who to believe, what to believe, what's true, what's not, what's opinion. We live in a world where the barrier to making content is so low that anybody can put anything out there really at the moment and, and dial up the volume so that every one of us gets bombarded with, with opinion and point of view. And our job, particularly as we go into this next week in the US, we're going to have a week of a very, very noisy week. There's a whole bunch of people um, spew out uh, their opinions about life, the universe and everything. And it will be incumbent upon us to somehow sort through and filter through all the noise to get to the truth. But what's true in a world where every single person appears to have a megaphone and where your trustworthiness appears to be really tightly correlated to your number of followers? How do you cut through the follower blaring noise and get to what's true? Well, as you move into 2020, as you move into this week, here are three things, when you, whenever you hear anything, on any subject, here are three things to look for. If you see these three things, you can place your bets much more confidently on the fact that what you're hearing is true. Now, again, you can, whatever you then come to believe in terms of what we should go do, that is your business. But in terms of what is true, look for these three things, not just in 21, 2021, from here on out, look for these three things. Firstly, whenever you hear something, and this, I, sh I shouldn't really have to say this, right? It's so obvious, but look for Evidence, that's the first thing, evidence. If somebody makes an assertion, then your first question would be, show me what happened. Show me, Missouri is the show me state. Josh Foley, the senator from Missouri is making a bunch of allegations and you sort of wanna go, okay, show me, where's the evidence for it? That is not a political question. That is a basic critical thinking question. Show me the evidence for it. Of course, in the context of our politics today, Allegations are not synonymous with evidence. Whenever you hear the word allegation this week or any other week, just hear the word monopoly money. Replace the word allegation with monopoly money because allegations have as much value as monopoly money. If somebody says, as one has heard over the last couple of days, we have unprecedented levels of allegations, you should be hearing we have unprecedentedly big piles of monopoly money. Monopoly money is a valueless allegations are valueless. You can't have unprecedentedly high levels of allegation because that's like aggregating nothingness. Allegations are monopoly money. If we are actually going to get to something that has value, we've got to go from the allegations to, okay, what actually happened? And that leads to another aspect of evidence you should look for, which is patterns of evidence. We can see one-offs all the time. Every now and again, we'll see a black swan even though we know that almost all sw other swans are going to be white. If you're going to bet on the color of a swan and you bet on black, you're going to lose. Bet on white swans because most swans are white. So you look for patterns of evidence. In this case, of course, next week, we're going to hear lots of allegations, monopoly money. And in the end, there may be some evidence of one-offs. What we have to see, though, is patterns. Um, if I remember a few years ago, Doris Kearns Goodwin, the historian, was accused of plagiarism. And she defended herself by saying, I took these notes, it was, it was a mistake that I didn't then attribute these notes in this one book to this author that I was reading at the time I was writing the book. It was a one-off. She since hasn't been accused of that ever again or before. It was clearly a one-off. Should we trust Doris Gordon's Goodwin? Yes. Uh, there's another author, I won't mention the name, on the New York Times bestseller list, actually number one in the New York Times bestseller list, who's been accused of plagiarism 221 times. <laughs> and had to remove 221 posts because they were clearly taken from somebody else. Okay, that's a pattern. If you see a pattern of evidence, then you should obviously give it far greater weight than a one-off. So that's the first thing, evidence. Second thing, error-free data. Um, there, there's an awful lot that you'll hear in the coming weeks, beginning with the sentence, I think, I think this, I think that, I think this, I think that. And of course, what people are allowed to think whatever they want to think. But if you want to know what's true, in the back of your head should be the question, well, where's the data? And data doesn't just mean numbers. Anyone can come up with numbers. What you're looking for is error-free data. Like if you have a broken thermometer, 
your broken thermometer will come up with numbers. It'll generate numbers that tell you uh, what the thermometer is reading. But if the thermometer is broken, <laughs> then the numbers don't mean anything. So your question as a critical thinker should be, is this not just numbers? Is it data that's error free? If your data has some systematic error in it, like you've got a lot of different broken thermometers, then you don't get rid of the error by adding more measurements together, just like you don't get rid of the polling error if there is something systematically wrong with the polling, which there was in 2016, undercounted Republicans, and they had the same problem in 2020. When you add all the polls together, you're adding together systematic error, which could in the end lead to 538, the polling aggregator site, saying that it was three chances out of four that the Democrats were going to take back the Senate, which, of course, as you know, they didn't. Um, so when you take error that's systematic and then you add it all up together, you get more error, not less. So whenever you hear anything in this coming week or beyond, look for error-free data. Lastly, and this is a weird one to say, but if you want to know whether or not something's true, look to see whether it's coming from someone with expertise. Expertise. In this day and age, we seem to have really devalued the value of expertise. And now we just go with the arrogance of amateurs. Because of all of these different social media platforms that we have, anyone with an opinion can just spout it. And, and, and amateurs, because we don't know very much as amateurs about the particular subject, we can get super arrogant about what we know. Knowledge, as you know, is like a circle, isn't it? The, 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 the more knowledge you have, the more the circumference of what you realize you don't know grows. That's why experts actually tend to be more humble than new amateurs to a subject. So expertise, look to see who is the person giving you the benefit of their opinion or point of view. And what you're looking for is expertise. And there's two kinds of expertise. One, experience. Expertise born of experience. If you wanted to know what it's like to climb Everest, I would probably, like you, listen to someone who's done it a whole bunch of times. So if somebody has actually done the thing that they're, they're pontificating about many, many times, if they have experience, that's valuable. No experience, no value. The second, of course, is education. I don't know why the, we're, we're going through this time right now where we're devaluing PhDs, as though somebody who's bothered to devote so much time and energy and effort toward the studying of a subject is somehow not trusted anymore. No, we should trust expertise that's born of education. We should value the depth. And of course, if you're gonna look at that, God here is in the details. If somebody, Let's take a recent example, Scott Atlas. Scott Atlas is a, a radiologist, a retired radiologist. When you, when you want to know if you can trust someone, look not just to whether they have a PhD or whether they have education-born expertise, but what's it in? When it comes to expertise, the details matter. What's it in? Scott Atlas was a radiologist. We probably shouldn't be listening to Scott about infectious disease, not because he's not smart, not because he's not an expert. He is. He's just not an expert in the thing that he's pontificating about. Just like if you have a PhD in, in social services, we wouldn't want you to do an appendectomy on us. It, what's the expertise in? Let's look for detail and make sure that the opinion that's coming from the person is born of their particular area of expertise. So as we go into this next week and into this next year, look for those three signs of credibility. Evidence, error-free data, and expertise. If you run everything through that filter, those three E's, if you like, if you run everything through that filter, you'll be in a much better position to stop and calmly think about what our next prescription or next action should be. And of course, every single one of us is entitled to our own opinion about the right next prescription or the right next action. But ideally, all of us would be operating on the same set of understandings about what's credible and about what's true. I've got to believe that we will have a better 2021 if all of us apply that kind of critical thinking lens to all that we hear.